What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the fighting game tutorial series, we are going to be going over rollback preparations part one. So when I say rollback, I mean rollback netcode. And by preparations, I mean things that we're going to either need to debug and make sure that our logic is correct when we implement rollback, as well as actually implementing features that abide by what rollback netcode needs. There are some certain cases where rollback netcode won't work in the logic that we've set up. And quite frankly, it's not really our fault. It's because rollback netcode relies on determinism. Determinism is basically if you have the same action occur an infinite number of times, you will always get the same result. Unreal and a lot of game engines are not deterministic or what we call non-deterministic game engines. So it makes things with rollback a little tricky, but we can do things on our side to help make that process as smooth as possible. So we're going to have a few episodes dedicated to rollback preparations to get anything that we've done in the series that would not be rollback supported to become rollback supported when we get there. In part one of rollback preparations, this episode right here, what we're going to do is load up a game. Let's load up a practice match. Pick our stage. All right, so we come into our game here and we have our AI character just in the blocking state. That's perfectly fine. Doesn't really matter what they're doing right now. And then we have my controlled character on the left side here. So what I'm going to do is be able to freeze the game on a given frame through a cheat. So cheat, we'll do freeze game, and everything should stop functioning. Or so it seems. Technically everything is still working, but the game is paused. This isn't the same pause as like when we press the pause key, because you'll see we don't have a menu or anything. We're just pausing the game so that the actors aren't doing anything, the timer's not going down, and other things like that. Now, if I want, I can activate my cheat menu again, go cheat, advance frame, and you'll see that everything moves slightly because the frame had advanced. We went to the next frame. So if I do it again, another frame, again, another frame, again, another frame. And I can do 60 of these in one second because we've set our project to have a goal of 60 FPS. Then when we want to come out of this, we can call cheat freeze game passing in false and the game will resume as normal. Now I'm gonna go back to the main menu and I'm gonna load up a versus match where the timer is going down. Now in this example, what I wanna do is freeze the game, advance it 60 times, and we should go down one second. Well, now we've done this correctly if you follow what I do. So we're going to open up the cheat menu, say cheat, freeze, game and you'll see we're at 43 seconds. Now what I can do is run my cheat advance frame here enough times until I get down to 42 seconds remaining in the match. Okay, we're at 42 seconds. So now we know that 60 frames from here, we should be at 41 seconds. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight. 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Perfectly at 60 frames, we go down to 41 seconds, so 60 frames worth of time, or essentially one second of time has passed. So everything is working beautifully. And then when we want to resume the game, we can go ahead and call it cheat freeze game with false. And everything goes back to normal. Then you can even test this with projectiles. So if we advance our frame, you can see that the projectile is being created and coming out frame by frame. This is going to be incredibly useful while we are working toward rollback netcode and other aspects of our fighting game, really, because then we can see a frame by frame guide make sure all of our actions are correct in the given frame. So that's what we're going to be covering today. If you're interested in getting caught up in the rest of the fighting game tutorial series, this is episode 248. 
I'll link you to the entire playlist right here in the top right corner. We've come a really long way. We still have a long way to go. Alternatively, if you only care about rollback netcode and advancing your game frame by frame, I do recommend you watch this episode right here, which is where we initially looked into the GGPO plugin for rollback. That's very important for what we're going to be using to implement rollback netcode in the future. Now this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. We're going to be doing everything in the code today. Good Visual Studio or whatever IDE you are using. And we're going to add all of our cheats to the fighter template game mode.h. So we go to fighter template game mode.h and scroll down. I have a bunch of functions. So we add full heal all, full heal player, full super all, full super player. And now I've added three more for freeze game with a should freeze boolean, advanced frame, and then freeze on frame. Freeze on frame isn't one we have to call manually. I just added it as an option and I'll explain that in a few minutes. Additionally, I've updated the category from exec functions to cheats. Not required that you do this, but I think it makes more sense now. So the first one here, void cheat freeze game with a boolean of should freeze defaulting to true. So if we don't pass any parameters into it, this will be true. So as the comment says, freeze or unfreeze the game at the current frame. And it is a U function of exec with a category of cheats. Making it a U function of exec is going to allow us to call it when we press the tilde key and then start typing in that window. I do have an episode on cheats that you can check out if you want to see some more cool things you can do with that. So this is the main function. Then we also have cheat advanced frame. This is how we're going to step from frame to frame or advance one frame at a time. So it says cheat advance the game by one frame freezing on the next frame. So void cheat advance frame with another U function of exec category of cheats. Last one here is void cheat freeze on frame. This one is specific to freezing the game at the current frame. This one doesn't take in a parameter. It will always freeze on the current frame. We have a U function of exec category of cheats. Those are the three functions we're creating today. So we can go to the fighter template game mode.cpp and scroll down to our cheat functions and go to where you want to add the new ones. First one is cheat freeze game. So void a fighter template game mode, cheat freeze game, bool should freeze. Now what we're going to do here is set the game to be paused, just like we do when we actually pause the game. Again, we're not bringing out the menu or anything, but as far as the logic and everything is concerned, the game is paused. Now to do this, we can call a function in uGameplayStatics called setGamePaused. But to get access to that function, we need to include a file. So I'm going to scroll up to the top of my fire template game mode.cpp and include kismet slash gameplay statics.h. Once you have this, you'll have access to the function. So type u gameplay statics colon colon set game paused and we need to pass it a world context. This is basically anything from the world or the level that we want to be in. So if you just call get world, that's enough for the world context. And then the other boolean is if it's paused or not. So should freeze is true, if we passed it to true or we didn't pass anything at all, then this is going to set the game to pause. However, if this is false, this will unpause the game. And notice I'm referring to it as frozen and not frozen instead of paused or not paused. In some cases, this is because I don't want you to think of it as pausing like the player's pausing it. We are freezing everything and we are literally pausing them but it's a different pause than what the player does. It's a manual, a cheat, or a debug pause. Technically, you could advance the frame without pausing the game. It won't hurt anything if you do. But if we pause it first, we can see everything that's going on at the very start. Then we call cheat advance frame. And when we do this, what we want to do is unpause or unfreeze the game, and then on the next frame, pause and freeze it again. So one frame worth of time was able to be processed, and then we're frozen again. So to unpause or unfreeze, we call you gameplay statics, colon, colon, set game paused, passing in the world context, which I'm using get world for, and then passing in false to say that we're not paused anymore. Then the important part here is that we want to wait one frame and then pause again. To do this, we can use our get world timer manager dot set timer for next tick. So get world timer manager dot set timer is something we use all the time, right? We can execute functions and sets of logic and then track the amount of time that's passed before calling something else. However, set timer for next tick. So like set timer, this is going to call a function. However, instead of calling it after a given period of time, it's going to call it on the next frame or the next tick. 
Now the ticks aren't fixed, they use a delta time, so there is a little bit of room for error there, but we don't have to worry about that for today's episode. That's something we're going to have entire topics about. Plus, this logic won't change as a result of that. We just need to update our tick function or make a new tick function that kind of handles everything related to that. But anyway, we need to determine the object that we're going to call this function on, and it's going to be this because we are going to call our cheat freeze on frame function. So the fire template game mode is the object that's going to be calling that. And then we need to pass in the function itself. So ampersand, a fighter template game mode, colon, colon, cheat freeze on frame. Like I mentioned earlier, we don't actually need this function. We could technically just use cheat freeze game function, passing in true. There are ways to set up a delegate and just pass in a parameter. It's actually very simple. But there is a reason I wanted to have a separate function for this. In the future, I want to do a few other things with this for my own testing. Nothing that we can test or use yet. And I do want to have a quick way to actually pause it, force pause it, and unpause it. Because this cheat freeze game function that I intend to call manually with the cheat is going to have more logic than this in it. Anyway, it's genuinely not important right now. You can set it up how you want, but I'm just kind of architecting this out while I'm going through it. And so I have this function as a separate function. So for the last function here, we have void a fire template game mode, colon, colon, cheat freeze on frame. And this is just going to force the game to be paused. So you gameplay statics, colon, colon, set game pause, get world true. Once you've implemented those cheats, we can go ahead and go back into the editor. Anyway, guys, that's what I got for you for today's episode. If you enjoyed this episode and you're excited to see more about rollback preparations and rollback netcode in general, then please subscribe and consider joining the Patreon, YouTube membership, or Discord subscriptions to support the channel further. If you ran into any problems while following this episode or have any concerns or thoughts, feel free to reach out to me in the Discord community. There's a link in the description, and I would be happy to help you out. Otherwise, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.